Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick or the Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about my week number 16 wide receiver start or sit decisions for fantasy football in 2021. Inside today's video, we're going to be going in depth into every single matchup from Thursday night football all the way until Monday night football, and I'll be telling you guys whether I believe you should start or sit the wide receivers in every single matchup. But before we could get on into things, I would like to ask if you are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video, to please make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below because not only is it free I put out content every single day to help you guys win your 2021 fantasy football championship and while you're down there whether you are new to the channel or not please make sure that you do hit that like button down below to help boost this video up the algorithm so that more beautiful people like yourself can see today's video I would also like to ask if you guys are on Twitter and would like to follow me on there to please do so at notorious FNTSY so without further ado let's get into my week number 16 wide receiver start or sit decisions we begin with tonight's game Thursday Thursday night football, the San Francisco 49ers at the Tennessee Titans. In this game for the 49ers, I am obviously going to be firing up Debo Samuel. It is a no-brainer at this point in the season. This guy could easily be the number one wide receiver in fantasy football this week. Recently, they have let him run the ball a lot more, and that is adding even further to his fantasy football value. Now, last week, I was a little bit worried about Jeff Wilson's value because of how much Debo Samuel was running the ball, but Debo Samuel still able to run the ball, and Jeff Wilson. Wilson, still able to be very effective in fantasy football, so I love Debo Samuel in this matchup up against the Tennessee Titans again. I really do believe that he could easily be the number one wide receiver in fantasy football. Now, a more modest projection would be like wide receiver five or six on the week, but hey, I do genuinely believe he could be the number one guy, so I'm definitely playing him in this matchup on Thursday night football. For the Tennessee Titans, A.J. Brown is finally returning for what feels like the first time in forever, like I'm Elsa singing in Frozen, and I like A.J. Brown in this matchup, but I don't love him because I don't feel very confident that coming back from that injury after he's been out for a while, I don't feel comfortable saying that he's going to be a top 10, a top 12 wide receiver, but you shouldn't really be surprised if he finishes as a top 18 wide receiver. I do understand that the Tennessee Titans passing offense has been putrid as of recently, but that's because A.J. Brown has been gone. A.J. Brown adds this spark to the offense, and I think up against the 49ers defense, while it will be a tougher matchup, I think A.J. Brown will get it done and will be a start-worthy wide receiver on the week. The other wide receivers in this game, Julio Jones, he could play, he could not play. Who gives a fuck at this point? This guy has a home set up in the blue injury tent. He probably has pictures of his family in there because he's there so often. And it's truly sad to see a player like Julio Jones, who is one of those names that I will always remember as one of the best wide receivers of the last couple of years, but sadly, the injuries have just gotten to him. If he does play, I'm not playing him. If he doesn't play, then I'm not playing the second-in-command Nick Westbrook E. Kain. I just don't think things will go well for him up against the 49ers defense. For Brandon Ayuk, he's kind of fallen out of favor as of recently with Debo Samuel being healthy, so I think it's best to just fade Brandon Ayuk in this matchup and sit him down on your bench. We move now to the first game on Christmas on Saturday. We got the Cleveland Browns at the Green Bay Packers. In this game, the Packers are likely to be without MVS due to COVID, so Alan Lazard should slot in as the number two wide receiver on the team. Now, he is going to be listed as a start in today's video, but my confidence in him isn't sky high because I understand that the Packers could have a game where they don't really have a true number two wide receiver, where he's throwing it to Lazard, where he's throwing it all around, and then Alan Lazard is kind of just left wishing he got those targets that Marquez Valdez-Scantling got last week. But there's also the chance that Devontae Adams has a dominating performance, as does Alan Lazard, and he finishes as a top 24 wide receiver on the week. So again, not very confident in Alan Lazard, but I would play him based upon the matchup. Devontae Adams, kind of like Debo Samuel, just a no-brainer. I saw a picture on Twitter of the Minnesota Vikings lining up three dudes trying to cover. It was triple coverage on Devontae Adams a couple of weeks ago. Even if that happens for the Cleveland Browns, I still think Devontae Adams could dominate in this game. I love the Green Bay Packers offense in this game, so Devontae Adams, no-brainer, and then Alan Lazard, maybe a little bit more risky, but I do think he will be the number two wide receiver on the team in this game. For the Cleveland Browns, maybe Baker Mayfield will be back, but at the end of the day, Jarvis Landry has just been atrocious this season. I think he's only had two solid games on the year. 
We're 16 fucking games into the season. That does not cut it. Up against the Packers defense, there's no way I'm starting Jarvis Landry. Then Donovan Peoples-Jones is the number two wide receiver there. He does have a lot of upside because if the quarterback is able to hit him deep down the field, that he could realistically have three targets, two catches, 125 yards, and a touchdown. But that is kind of the more unlikely odds of actually happening in this game. The more likely thing to happen in this game is he gets three targets, gets 40 yards, doesn't do shit for fantasy football. So Donovan Peoples-Jones will be sitting on the bench for me. Next up, we move to the final game on Christmas before pivoting to Sunday, the Indianapolis Colts at the Arizona Cardinals. Now, I will be starting Michael Pittman, but I'm going to be honest with you, my confidence in Michael Pittman throughout the season was relatively high. But as of recently, it just keeps falling and falling. Last week, the motherfucker got ejected from the game. I understand you can't project that. He probably would have had a all right game, probably no fantastic game. But this week up against the Arizona Cardinals, I'm going to start him because I believe the Arizona Cardinals are going to bounce back strongly in this game. And this could be a very high scoring matchup between the Indianapolis Colts and the Arizona Cardinals. I will be playing Michael Pittman Jr., but he's far from a top 12 wide receiver. Probably rank him close to wide receiver 24 than wide receiver number number 12, so don't love Michael Pittman this week, but at the end of the day, I certainly would start him. For the Arizona Cardinals, it does appear that Christian Kirk will be the number one wide receiver in the absence of Mr. DeAndre Hopkins. Now, something we've seen all season is that the number two role when DeAndre Hopkins was healthy has been up in the air. Some weeks, you see Rondell Moore have a solid game. That other weeks, it's Christian Kirk. Then the next week, it's A.J. Green. So it is certainly still up in the air who the true number one wide receiver is, but based upon what we saw last week, Kyler Murray was four feeding the ball to Christian Kirk, even though they got absolutely trance. They got absolutely murdered by the Detroit Lions last week. I think they bounced back, and I think Christian Kirk has yet another fantastic game for the Indianapolis Colts. T.Y. Hilton is just washed at this point in his career. I don't think that necessarily means that he should retire or something, but I think that his time as a fantasy football relevant player is basically done. A.J. Green, though, kind of was in the same boat at the beginning of the season for me. I was like, oh man, A.J. Green's seasons of being a great fantasy football player are done. But this year, he hasn't been complete shit. He's actually been pretty solid when he has been called upon to get the football. Though, at the end of the day, I do think Kirk is going to be the number one guy here. So, I'm going to sit down A.J. Green. Now, we move to the Sunday slate beginning with the New York football Giants at the Philadelphia Eagles. An absolutely garbage game in terms of just watchability. Who cares? I understand that the Giants, since this is an NFC beast, an NFC East battle, that maybe, just maybe, the Giants are able to crawl into this game and keep it close. But I wouldn't be surprised at all. I mean, the spread is 10. The Eagles are favored by 10 fucking points. This could be a murder. This could be a terrible game for the Giants. So Kenny Galladay, Kenny G, Kenny G spot, Kenny Bones, Kenny Galladay. I'm not fucking playing this guy. He actually looked better with Jake Fromm because Jake Fromm is not a pussy and will actually throw the guy the ball. Who knows who's going to start? Is it going to be big neck Mike Glennon? Is it going to be Jake Fromm? At the end of the day, I don't give a fuck. I'm not starting Galladay. I'm not starting Kadarius Tony. Hopefully next year, things get better. Devontae Smith played all right up against the Washington football team on Tuesday Night Football. Still don't want to be starting him, even though Jalen Hurts looks fantastic. He's just force-feeding the rock to Dallas Goder, Quez Watkins, Jalen Rager. Who gives a fuck who the number two wide receiver is here in Philly because they are irrelevant. Next up, we move to the LA Rams at the Minnesota Vikings, which is basically the complete opposite of the game I just talked about. In that game, there was four receivers that I named that I don't want to start. In this game, there's five wide receivers that I want to start. The LA Rams at the Minnesota Vikings. For the Rams, I'm going to start all of Cooper Cup, Odell Beckham Jr., and Van Jefferson. It is still very hazy, very cloudy on who the number two wide receiver is on this Rams team behind Cooper Cup. Basically, towards the end of the season now, I honestly think that both Odell and Van Jefferson have value to be top 24 wide receivers. But they could also both shit the bed like we saw last week in that matchup on Tuesday Night Football up against the Seattle Seahawks. At the end of the day, though, the upside of this matchup to be very high scoring up against the Minnesota Vikings defense is very high. So I'm going to be starting Cooper Cup, Odell Beckham Jr., and Van Jefferson. Cooper Cup is also in the debate to be the number one wide receiver every single week. This guy is going to break Calvin Johnson, Megatron's fucking single season receiving yard record. Now I understand, but Nick, um, this is in 17 games, not 16, so he had a, uh, he has an advantage, and I understand that, right? Technically a Mickey Mouse victory for Cooper Cup, but what's even more impressive is that Matthew Stafford did it for both of them. He did it for Cup, and he did it 
for obviously Calvin Johnson. So very impressive. Cooper Cup's fucking amazing. Not going to get down on my knees and suck this guy's cock anymore. We all know how good Cooper Cup is. Again, Cooper Cup, the clear number one wide receiver. And then Odell and Van Jefferson are kind of just up and down. I do like them both though in this matchup. Justin Jefferson has been amazing thus far this season, hitting the gritty all the time, scoring a million touchdowns here up against the LA Rams. But Nick, he's going to go up against Jalen Ramsey. I don't care. I'm still playing Justin Jefferson with that top five upside. Adam Thielen, it appears that he should be good to go this week. Now, is that a lock? No. Based upon what I read, there is a far better chance the team feels way better about him playing this week when compared to the last couple of weeks. So if he is good to go, I am going to play him because he is the number two receiver behind Justin Jefferson. And again, I do really believe this is going to be a high scoring game for KJ Osborne. I understand he shit the bed last week. I thought he would have a much better game, but he would be the number two wide receiver in Thielen's absence. And I would think about starting KJ Osborne if Thielen didn't play. But with Thielen healthy, I don't want anything to do with KJ Osborne. Next up, we move to the New England Patriots going up against the Buffalo Bills in New England for what could be the most interesting game on the week. This time, there isn't going to be torrential downpour, winds going 70 miles an hour. If I, if Devontae Smith was to have played in that game with that much wind, I think he might have flown out of the fucking stadium. So the Buffalo Bills at the New England Patriots, but before we break this game down in terms of the wide receiver position, I would like to ask that if you have ended up enjoying thus far, please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below as well as hitting that like button. It would help me out a ton. I would greatly appreciate it. So in this game, I wouldn't be surprised if the Patriots won. So Nick, why don't you have any wide receivers listed on there? It's because the problem is that the Patriots wide receivers just are not all that consistent. Now gun to the head, I'd probably tell you to start Kendrick Bourne because he has been more consistent you know, more consistent, and actually scores touchdowns. Jacoby Myers is just allergic to scoring touchdowns. But at the same time, Mystic Mac Jones just spreads the ball around so much that I don't really want to start any of the receivers for the Patriots. For the Buffalo Bills, Stefan Diggs, obviously, that's a no-brainer. You play him every week. And then we got Gabe Davis, Emmanuel Sanders, could be in, could be out if he plays. Then my confidence in Gabe Davis to potentially have a humongous showing is definitely a lot lower, but I still would start him because Cole Beasley has COVID and he is out for 10 days, so he's definitely going to be missing this game. Gabe Davis has scored four total fucking touchdowns in the last three games. He has been amazing. Up against the Patriots, defense obviously is far from a wet dream matchup, far from the ideal matchup, but I still believe he will be able to get it done in this matchup. Next up, we move to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the Carolina Panthers. Panthers, I understand that the Buccaneers just got basically, have you ever seen one of those movies where the kid gets pantsed in front of like the middle school and the high school and everyone laughs at him or when they pants a kid and they give him a wedgie and they fucking lift him up the pole next to the American flag in those children's movies that I used to watch when I was a kid. That is basically what the New Orleans Saints did to Tampa Bay Tom Brady. They absolutely fucking embarrassed this guy, but now he's going to be pissed off. He doesn't have Chris Godwin doesn't have Mike Evans, and frankly, it doesn't matter at all. I think Antonio Brown is going to eat in this game. I think Tampa Bay Tom Brady is going to be angry, so I think AB has a solid showing here. He did play very well this season when he was healthy and prior to his suspension for faking the COVID vaccine card for the Carolina Panthers. I'm going to play DJ Moore, but the problem with DJ Moore has nothing to do with DJ Moore. It's the quarterback situation. They're saying they're going to play Cam Newton, but Matt Rule also said that this week you are also going to be seeing Sam Darnold, Mono Man Sam, why are you doing this? Just stick with one fucking quarterback. This is an issue. If you just have one quarterback, then you're set. When you have multiple quarterbacks, you're basically just putting the team in an absolute fucking frenzy. DJ Moore, I'm still going to play him, but the upside's limited by the quarterback position. For the Buccaneers, they also have Tyler Johnson, who should be the number two wide receiver. Who I actually like a decent amount in this matchup. The problem is that there are a lot of risks going into this because I don't think it's locked and loaded that Tyler Johnson is the number two wide receiver. Now, based upon the eye test, if you whip out the microscope, you fucking inspect the games with the microscope, you would see that, hey, Tyler Johnson is going to be the number two wide receiver in the absence of Chris. Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. The problem is they still do have other options there who I think could get the ball and could take away from Tyler Johnson. If you are a little bit more risky, you're in a deeper league. I think you can start Tyler Johnson, but if you're in a 10, 12 team league, I think he's best left on the bench. And then maybe you can play him next week in your championship game for the Carolina Panthers. Robbie Anderson has been the most confusing player all season. Every single week, I tell you to sit him. And then magically, 
like once every six weeks. The guy just pops off and takes a dump on the defense, and it makes virtually no sense at all. It makes no sense because he's not the number one target there. It doesn't even seem like he's the number two target there, and they obviously are going to be running the ball a lot more with Cam Newton. So Robbie Anderson has really fallen out of favor. After a really solid 2020 fantasy football campaign, man, has he sucked this season. And up against the Bucks defense, that's a big no-no for Robbie Anderson. Next up, we move to the Jacksonville Jaguars at the New York Jumbo Jets. The game I've been waiting to talk about. This game just gets me erect underneath this table. But at the end of the day here, Jaguars at the New York Football Jets. I'm going to play Laquan Treadwell. Now, I know at the beginning of the season, there was a huge debate actually in the offseason, I should say. When we were drafting our fantasy teams, is it going to be uh, DJ Chark is the number one receiver? going to be LaVishka Chenault, or is it going to be Marvin Jones? Now, I was on the bandwagon of Marvin Jones. Why, you might ask? Because he was just going the latest, and I was like, you know what? There's probably a 33.3333 chance that any of them are the number one receiver, so why not just take the guy going in round like 12 instead of round 9, right? That just made the most sense to me, and it turns out that Marvin Jones at the beginning of the season was looking solid, but recently hasn't done much. They fired Urban Meyer, and out of nowhere, like an RKO from Randy Orton, Laquan Treadwell has been the number one wide receiver. Now, is he a very trustworthy receiver? No, but I'm still going to play him based on the volume standpoint. He's been seeing a lot of volume as of recently, and this matchup is a wet dream up against the Jumbo Jets. I like Trevor Lawrence here to actually play well. So Laquan Treadwell here up against the Jets. I think he has a solid game. Marvin Jones, LaVishka Chanel. Again, it just seems like Treadwell is the number one guy, so I don't want to be playing them. Jamison Crowder, Braxton Berrios, the two wide receivers to name of the Jets. Berrios has been playing solid recently. Maybe both of them have a good game, but at the end of the day, with how many COVID cases are happening to the Jets and with how shit the Jets look, I don't really want to be trusting any of them, so I'm leaving them on the bench. Next up, we move to the Detroit Lions at the Atlanta Falcons. A huge round of applause for the Detroit Lions. They won. They beat the Arizona Cardinals, a team that a lot of people would tell you prior to last week was the best team in the NFC. So congratulations to the Lions, though I made note of this yesterday. If you go to the Arizona Cardinals Twitter account, they never even posted that they lost. So maybe the game's still going on. Amon Ross St. Brown here up against the Atlanta Falcons. St. Brown has been a target hot in the last three games. Last week, 11 targets. The week prior, 12 targets. The week prior to that, 12 fucking targets. This guy is getting peppered all game long. I understand all year we really did have a debate. Is it going to be St. Brown? Is it going to be Khalif Raymond? Is it going to be Josh Reynolds? And it was really up in the air. And really, in reality, through the first 14, 13 weeks of the season, the answer just changed every week. There was no definitive answer. But now, I can stand here, sit here in my chair, confidently and tell you that Amon Ross St. Brown is the number one wide receiver of the Detroit Lions and I love this matchup up against the Falcons. Russell Gage, while the Atlanta Falcons have sucked complete and utter donkey cock basically all season long, Russell Gage has played well. He's performed recently, not at the beginning of the season, he had multiple goose eggs throughout the beginning of the season, but he's performed recently because of a lot of volume, very similar to St. Brown, so I don't really love Russell Gage necessarily as a player, but in terms of volume and in terms of matchup, I do like Russell Gage in this game. For the other wide receivers, Olamide Zacchaeus would be the number two wide receiver in Atlanta don't really want anything to do with him and then Josh Reynolds could be an interesting start if you think the Lions are going to play well yet again in this matchup but again St. Brown just sees so many targets that unless Josh Reynolds moseys his way on waddle waddle till the very next day bum 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 into the end zone then Josh Reynolds will probably not have the greatest of games of note how in the fuck did Kyle Pitts make the Pro Bowl how how is he in the Pro Bowl but Nick, he has like the second most receiving yards in the NFC uh, at the tight end position. Who cares? Who cares, dude? This guy is not a Pro Bowl player yet. I understand that the Pro Bowl doesn't mean anything because the fans vote on it, right? Doesn't fucking mean anything. But it's so annoying because I genuinely think Dallas Goddard deserved it. But then, you know, they just give it to Kyle Pitts, so it is what it is. Next up, we move to a matchup between the L.A. Chargers at the Houston Texans. In this game, I'm going to fall right back into the trap and play Mike Williams. This is a great matchup up against the Houston Texans defense. And the Texans offense actually has looked pretty decent as of recently. Meaning that maybe they'll be able to crawl their way back into the game where the Chargers can keep throwing the ball. And maybe they're not just handing it off to either Austin Eckler or Justin Jackson deep into the game. Keenan Allen is a must-start wide receiver. Mike Williams 
is basically one of those boomer bust players. He's either going to hang 25 points on the Houston Texans, or he is going to completely butt fuck you metaphorically in fantasy football and score like six points. At the end of the day, though, the matchup is just so juicy that I'm going to be starting both of them. Brandon Cooks does have COVID, but could be good to go on Sunday. I haven't seen anything that says he's out yet. So assuming that he plays, he's just been on fire recently. Davis Mills actually looks pretty solid. So I'm fine starting Brandon Cooks here. Nico Collins would slot in as the number one, the numero uno wide receiver if if Brandon Cooks doesn't play, but I don't really want to play with that. So I'm not going to play Nico Collins. Next up, we move to the Baltimore Ravens at the Cincinnati Bengals. Jamar Chase has been playing not so good recently. Very Instead of very nice, uh, very bad, I don't like, uh, not very good at all. Pretty sad. Um, but you still got to play him, right? You still got to play him because he still has that upside. You can still see him just hanging a million points in this game, just having a tremendous showing, and that's why I'm going to start him. Tee Higgins has played really solid as of recently, very reliable, definitely going to play him here up against the Ravens. This could be a very high-scoring game, but since this is an NFC North battle, this is either going to be a fucking barn burner where there are a million points or just a slow and, sna uh, slow and steady snail race where there's not a lot of points. I hope there's a lot of points, so I'm going to play Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. Hollywood Brown, basically Mike Williams light. Um, basically the exact same thing could happen with him. He can either have 30 points or he's going to get you like five points. And recently it's been closer to the five points, so I'm not very confident in Marquise Brown. But again, the upside is definitely there. Rashad Bateman has been playing well as of recently. But last week, not so hot. Here up against the Bengals, I'd rather just sit him down. There are a lot of wide receiver options to play, so I'd rather leave Bateman on my bench. Next up, we move to the Chicago Bears at the Seattle Seahawks. Last week, DK Metcalf, you're the number one receiver. Lock it is out. And still, like your uh, fucking Bruce Buffer or whatever that guy's name is, Michael Buffer, announcing the UFC. You know when the guy wins? And they're like, and still, the UFC champions. And still, DK Metcalf fucking sucks. He does nothing. Absolutely nothing. Now, I'm sorry about yelling, but this motherfucker just doesn't do anything. I don't get it. I don't get it. Up against the Bears, this is a wet dream matchup, but I don't even want to get near this man. The COVID precautions say stay six feet away from him. I don't want to be six fucking zillion miles away from this guy. I don't want anything to do with DK Metcalf. Nothing. Zilch. Fuck DK Metcalf. And I called it in the offseason. I said DK Metcalf was not worth that pick. Congratulations, Nick. You're a fucking genius. But Tyler Lockett, I'm going to be playing him. He just gets force-fed when he plays, so I'm going to play him. Mooney, kind of falling out of favor. Definitely scored a touchdown last week. That wasn't called a touchdown, but, you know, I'm blind, I'm deaf. I want to be a ref. Darnell Mooney, though, definitely going to play him here up against Seattle. Demir Bird will be the number two wide receiver, assuming Allen Robinson just doesn't play. Who cares if Allen Robinson plays anyways? You're not going to play him. DK Metcalf again. I'm just sick of this shit. I really am. Fuck DK Metcalf. In reality, he's probably a nice guy, but... For fantasy football, I'm just done with it. Next up, we move to the Pittsburgh Steelers at the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, the Chiefs are down tremendous, down astronomical when it comes to COVID cases. So I'm not going to tell you it's a lock that Tyreek plays. If Tyreek plays, I'm obviously going to play him because the upside is immense. So obviously going to play him. If he doesn't play, then I would think about playing McCall Hardman. I would play him, but like Byron Pringle might be the number two receiver there. Maybe even... Uh, I don't think Flash Gordon can play, but maybe fucking Flash Gordon will end up being the number two wide receiver, right? Or the number one receiver in Hill's absence. I would most likely want to stay away, though. Uh, Deontay Johnson has been fantastic all year long. Doesn't really have that drop seize that he had last year, the drop itis, whatever the fuck you want to call it, where he just couldn't hold on to the football. That has not been an issue at all this season. I think he has like one or two drops. After not dropping the ball the first, like, 13 weeks of the season, the guy's great. Even if the Pittsburgh Steelers suck cock in this game, right, they play terrible. De uh, Deontay Johnson typically is immune to the bad games from Big Ben, so I'm definitely going to play Deontay Johnson. For the Kansas City Chiefs, again, McCole Hardman, if Tyreek Hill doesn't play, I'd probably play him, but I wouldn't feel great about it. Chase Claypool, Mr. First Down, instead of, you know, handing the ball off to the fucking ref, the guy's an idiot, a buffoon, Mr. TikTok, Mr. Corvette Corvette, sitting this guy down. Not the worst matchup, though, but I don't really want to be playing him. Next up, we move to the Denver Broncos at the Las Vegas Raiders. Now, I understand that. Oh, Nick, um, Hunter Renfro, I thought you said he was going to have a great game last week, Nick. What happened, you fucking idiot? Oh, boy. Yeah, he had a bad game, right? But who expected him to play bad in that game? I didn't. I think if you played him, you didn't think he would do bad either, so... Bad game, 
bounce back game here up against the Broncos. You just got to rely on Hunter Renfro. He just gets so many opportunities to touch the ball every game that you want to be starting him. Then the Broncos. Horsecock, Drew Locke going to be the starter in this game. Very interesting because it makes the game more fun because this guy just fucking launches the ball down the field. Teddy Bridgewater, again, not trying to dance on this guy, right? He has a fucking concussion. I hope he's okay. But at the end of the day, the guy's fucking boring to watch. Oh, let me just dump the fucking ball off. It's so boring. It's so fucking boring. At least Horsecock, Drew Locke is going to heave the rock down the field. Maybe Judy or Sutton have a fantastic game, but based upon what we've seen, you just can't trust him. Then Zay Jones, probably the number two receiver for the Raiders. Don't really want anything to do with him, but he does have very big play potential. Next up, we move to the Sunday night football matchup because who doesn't want to watch the NFC East in prime time for the 7,000th time this season? Hopefully the Washington football team don't have to play Garrett Gilbert here. Hopefully we see a real quarterback, even if that's just Kyle Allen should be better than Garrett Gilbert. Uh, not in love with McLaurin here, but I'm going to play him up against Dallas. CeeDee Lamb, Amari Cooper, they have fallen victim to Dak Prescott playing like complete and utter shit over the last couple of weeks. This guy has completely fucking sucked recently. I still play him every week, but guess what? I can't play him anymore because I'm out of the playoffs with the team that I have him because he fucked me. Hard. No lube. Pain. Like, it was just pain. Like... But I'm still going to play Lamb and Cooper because eventually you can just see it magically happening where it just all clicks. It all comes back together, and this guy just has a fantastic showing. So I'm going to play CD Lamb. I'm going to play Amari Cooper. But at this point, I'm pissed off about it. I'd rather play Lamb, though, over Cooper. And then for the Washington football team, they've got DeAndre Carter behind Terry McLaurin. We'll make some special plays, but at the end of the day, not a guy you want to be starting. And then Michael Gallup like a fucking horse. If Dak's not playing well, definitely don't want to be playing him. Final game here. Monday night. Football, Tua Tungavailoa, and the Miami Dolphins going to New Orleans to play up against Ian Book, baby. The game everyone's waiting for. Taysom Hill likely not going to play. Ian Book slated as the starter. Trevor Seaman, Trevor Simeon not going to be playing either. This was going to be such a fun game. Such a fun game. Like, the Saints just fucking railroaded. They just destroyed the Bucks. Now we get to see him play the Dolphins. This was going to be a fun game, but now it's ruined. Ruined by the vid. So here we got the Dolphins at the Saints. Jalen waddled away. Waddle, waddle. Should be good to go in this game. Smash matchup here. Feed Jalen Waddle the ball. I understand. But Nick, he's going to go up against Lattimore. I don't give a fuck. They're going to feed him the ball. He's going to have a good game. Devontae Parker won't have Lattimore on him. He's going to have a good game as well. The upside is certainly not as high as last week because Jalen Waddle is there, but I'm still going to be playing him for the Saints with Ian Book under center. I mean, with anyone under center, you're not going to play any of these Saints receivers, so not even noteworthy to talk about him. Callaway, Smith, sit down, pal. So thank you guys all so much for watching today's video. If you did end up enjoying, please make sure you hit that like button as well as hitting that subscribe button down below. I would appreciate it a ton. I love you guys all so much. I hope you have a great rest of your guys' day, and as always, good boy.